Okay, so we've created our trade signals, but the way most people end up using our tools is to create an automated trade system to whatever degree you're comfortable actually automating your system. So Bloodhound's role is just the entry. So if you were to automate your trades, Bloodhound signals would act as the trigger for entering the trade. But in order to actually submit that order, manage the trade, manipulate your trades, and so on, uh, you need a different tool called Blackbird. Most people who get Bloodhound also get Blackbird. That's why we offer a nice bundle discount. And so we're going to go ahead and dive right into Blackbird and start playing with the trade management side of things. Now, before we do, since we plan to use our Bloodhound signals here as the automated entry, let's go ahead and rename our logic template. You may have already done this in a previous video, but just in case you haven't, we'll right click on the new logic tab, go rename, and let's just name it entry signals. And you'll see in a minute where that comes in. Now, the reason why we do that is because later on, if you wanted to create a, a whole separate set of, of signal rules to get out of trades, to exit trades, you could create one that says exit signals, right? I'll delete that for now because we're not going to do that quite yet, um, but we've set ourselves up for success here. Okay, so I'll close the window that saves our work to our file. Now, before we add Blackbird, just to keep things nice and clean, I'm actually going to remove Bloodhound, the indicator, from our chart. Because in a minute, Blackbird will actually put it back on for us. So just to keep things nice and clean, we'll remove Bloodhound. And by the way, I'll hit cancel because a quick way to do that, by the way, if you're, if you're new to NinjaTrader, you may not know this, if you just click on the plot of the indicator and press delete on your keyboard, that also removes the indicator from the chart. Same thing for any other indicator. Okay, so like I said, Bloodhound is an indicator. Blackbird is a strategy. A strategy is required to automate trades. Okay, so we'll find it under shark indicators, double click that, double click Blackbird. And there's only a couple things we need to decide here. Now, first of all, every strategy needs to be enabled. So we'll check the enabled box. By the way, if this box does not let you check it, if it's grayed out and you click it and nothing happens, make sure that you're connected. Let me hit cancel here. Make sure you're connected to a data feed. Now, if you're new to NinjaTrader and you still don't have a live account, you can always uh, use the simulated data feed. Um, uh, you, you might be able to use the playback, uh, but if you have a data feed, awesome. Blackbird doesn't really care what kind. Okay, so we'll go back into strategies. I'll go ahead and add Blackbird back to our chart. We'll check enable. And uh, because we're just learning, we wanna make sure we're on either the Sim 101 account, it might also be called the demo, um, or if you're on the playback connection, it might say playback 101. Any of those are simulated uh, accounts, but to learn more about that, that's, that's a Ninja Trader feature you'll want to dig into their documentation, but this just keeps me in a, in a safe zone. Now, later on, we will be messing around with backtesting, so I will enable backtest mode. We'll talk about the benefits and limitations of that um, in Ninja Trader, but we'll enable that for now. And that's it, enabled, sim, and backtest, we'll hit OK. And Blackbird will be added to our chart. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, but it's okay to do it here, is uh, you will want to make sure the Ninja Trader chart trader is turned off. So this button up here, no need to hide it, just turn it off all the way. Ninja Trader's chart trader doesn't play very well with third-party strategies like Blackbird, so that's actually why we provide our own chart trader. It's a little nicer looking too. Okay, so we have the Blackbird panel on the right. But you'll notice if I click go long or go short, nothing happens. Right? It's because we haven't told it yet what to do when we enter our trade, when we go long or go short. All of our trade management rules, including that, is in this order settings button. So this is the key button that brings up the Blackbird interface. All right, so now we can get cooking. Now, just like in Bloodhound, we want to save our work. Blackbird getting started. Now this first video is not going super deep, but I want to add Bloodhound signals to get that ready for automated entries, and then we'll create a simple order set and discuss. So since we already have Bloodhound signals ready to uh, at least get started with, we'll go in and select the file. So we'll open this up by clicking the uh, signal box here. We'll load our file, and there it is, Bloodhound getting started. 
Now that we've loaded the file, it has populated this drop down list for entry signal template. We're saying these are the signal rules that I want to use to enter trades automatically. Now, later on, when we are ready for automation, we, we will end up using this toggle button up here to turn on the auto trading uh, on a live market. Okay, so we're saying here are our entry signals. If we did have another template, that's where we would choose for exit signals. But we'll leave that out for now and click away. So now there are our signals. Now, much like Ninja Trader's ATM rules, uh, you're setting it up in a similar way. You're creating your order sets. So in Blackbird, we're going to create our first order set just to keep it nice and simple for this example. Let's go market entry. Okay. First time you take an action like that, it can take a few seconds, so just a heads up there. Okay, so we've prepared our first order set with one contract, market entry, and we can choose to add a profit target or a stop loss. Now in here, we've got some presets just to make things a little bit quicker for us. We could choose 10 ticks and modify it or just go straight custom. Doesn't really matter, we'll go custom. And let's set the initial placement, where that profit target will start or be when we enter the trade, whether we enter it by clicking go long or with an automated entry from our signals, we're gonna say this is where our profit target will start. So down here, we're going to set that to, let's let's say it's, uh, I, I don't know what's appropriate for the CL, let's say it's 20 ticks, um, just as an example. And you'll notice that when I set the long ticks to 20, it automatically sets the short to negative 20, negative just meaning below price, right? So for a short trade, it will be the opposite, which makes sense. Now, one thing I've noticed, some people when they first see this window, when they're just setting a 20 tick profit target, you know, sometimes they get a little overwhelmed by this because they say, well, I'm just setting a, a, a profit target. Why is there so much to this? Why is this so complicated? Well, it's because later on when you want to get a little bit more creative with your orders, you could say, you know what? I don't want it to be 20 ticks. I want it to be set to the value of an indicator. And you can select an indicator that you want your profit target to be set to. Or even later on with trailing actions, you can even attach, effectively attach your profit target or stop loss or, or even your trailing or uh, entry order uh, to an indicator. So it's really flexible. It allows you to do lots of stuff. Um, so don't get overwhelmed by this. If you're just setting 20 ticks, that's all you got to do is set the offset from price. That's what we're doing, 20 ticks. Okay. Well, uh, we will definitely get back to this stuff uh, and play with some more advanced examples in a future video. Okay. Click out of that. Now we've got a 20 tick profit target. And just to keep things uh, moving along here, let's do a 10 tick stop loss. And again, you can customize that. That's just a preset. Now, obviously there are other features that we will get into in a future video, but let's hit save and close. This is important. The way Blackbird works is you can click OK and start playing with the settings you just did, but it will not save your work to the file we're working in. So it is important to hit save and close so there's no doubt on that. Now it is giving us a message effectively saying that, hey, we have added Bloodhound signals to our system. So we need to press F5 or reload Ninja script uh, to Blackbird will actually add a copy of Bloodhound to the chart for us. That's why we removed it before, right? Um, so that we have one set of signals visible on our chart. And so there's no confusion on which is which and where things are coming from. We've added Blackbird and you'll see that the Bloodhound button up here is now sort of a turquoise color implying that it, it was added by Blackbird. Now, if we were ready to start trading automatically, if we're like, hey, I love this system, I'm ready to go on a live market, you can just click auto trading on. And as price comes in, um, if a signal were to appear, then it would enter a trade automatically. Okay. But I like to do some uh, iteration and testing before we actually start risking real money. Um, one thing I like to do is take a look at the dynamic planner. So the dynamic planner allows us to visualize where our orders will be at their initial placement. Remember, we set it to a 20 tick and a 10 tick for our profit and stop loss. If I click plan long, this is gonna show me where if I were to click go long or if I were to enter a trade with a signal, this is where my stop loss would be and this is where my profit target would be. 
Now, I use this personally as a way to just validate that, yes, I, you know, I put a negative correctly on the stop loss, so it's below price. And, you know, it's just kind of a nice visual uh, confirmation. But this dynamic planner was also intended to be a discretionary tool. You don't have to enter trades automatically with signals. You can enter a trade anytime you want. And this allows you to sort of take one step before entering and say, OK, I'm going to get in now. But you know what? I'm going to tighten my stop loss up. And, and let's tighten my profit target, too. I, I'm, you know, I like this trade, but I don't like it that much, right? So if I were to click Execute Now, and actually, I, I'm on live trades or live market, so I might as well. I am on a SIM account, so that's safe. You'll notice I clicked Execute, and it, even though the stop loss is labeled as negative 10 ticks, right? It, 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 that was its label. Um, we have adjusted where it actually will start by moving those ghost flags uh, tighter to the price. So that allows you to just have a little more control as a discretionary trader in those moments where you want to jump in. And by the way, now that we're in the trade, we have full control. You can click and click, and we have now submitted uh, an adjustment, a modification to that stop loss order, um, and it's now sitting uh, where we put it. So we can bring it way up here. If I bring this, the profit target way down here, actually below price, order. that will flatten us out. Now, in a future video, we will be adding another order set. We're going to be talking about some more advanced, especially trailing action rules. That's my favorite feature of Blackbird. I get so nerded out about all the amazing things you can do with, uh, with trailing actions, especially with the stop loss, um, as well as our management rules. So there's uh, features in here that just add that extra little bit of oomph uh, being able to set things like net max profit for the day. If you're automatically trading, you can say, hey, once I've reached a certain profit, stop trading for the day. Little things like that that uh, give you just that much more control over your trading. All right, I'll see you in the next video.